Good day, everyone, and welcome to Adventures with Parker. Today, our Missouri road trip continues with our third theme park of the trip, Worlds of Fun. Now, this theme park is one that I've been wanting to visit for a while. It's considered to be one of the weaker parks on the Cedar Fair chain, but I'm actually very interested in it because it originally started as uh, a place that was themed to Jules Verne's novel, Around the World in 80 Days. Now, the theming isn't quite as strong as it was when it opened, but there's still little patches of it around the park, so I'm excited to, you know, keep my eyes open to see all of that. The other thing is that we're visiting this park at a very interesting time, because not only are they celebrating their 50th anniversary this year, but they're also celebrating their Grand Carnival event. So there's gonna be some cool decorations around the park. There's gonna be some special food, special entertainment. So it's a great day to be here. So I'm very excited to check everything out. And of course, as with every other park, just explore and see what Worlds of Fun is all about. Are you guys excited for Worlds of Fun? Yeah! All right, so without any further ado, let the adventures begin. Flower! Of course, we can't visit a theme park without checking out their carousel. And this one, the Grand Carousel, was built in 1918 in Illinois, by the look of it. Oh man, I do love these classic carousels though. Like just the details, the colors. This one seems especially vibrant. Yeah, gotta appreciate those carousels. So I accidentally misread that big sign as Illinois, but no, it's Illion, which is a famous carousel manufacturer. So this particular installation was made for the sequicentennial celebration of the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1927. It was then moved to a park in Alabama in the 1930s, operated in Coney Island for a while. And then this is actually the carousel that used to operate as Jogger Lake. So it didn't get moved here to World So Fun until that park closed in 2007. So yeah, we definitely have a very storied history with this one. I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear it on video, but something that I've noticed about the park, even just coming in through the entry gate, is that they have themed music. You can hear this dramatic, swelling, sweeping score. I mean, at least here in the Gateway Gardens. I'm not sure that'll carry on through the rest of the park. Like those little, little details, even in audio, definitely go a long way. Okay, we are starting to venture into the park, and the first area we're going to encounter is the East Asia section. And right off the bat, like I said, there are actual pieces of theming in this park. I think this is an aspect of Worlds of Fun that doesn't get talked about enough, so it's great to see it in person. But yeah, we're just on our way to our first ride of the day now. I don't think we really know what it is yet, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so our first coaster of the day is going to be Spinning Dragons, which is our Girl Flowers spinning coaster. It looks to be very similar to uh, Pandemonium at Six Flags St. Louis, if it's not an exact clone. But the one thing that this ride has going for it is the beautiful landscaping. Like, oh my gosh, they have a fountain in the center there. There's flowers and trees all around. Like, this is a beautifully placed coaster. I'm already so impressed. Now, the one thing that I am noticing that isn't too great about the park is that Spinning Dragons has a four person car and as of right now they are doing one train ops which means that only four people can go through at a time and then you gotta wait to unload, reload, check the restraints. On this type of coaster that's not good like that's not good at all so that that has me a little worried. Well it's not really one train how they're really doing it is I can see by I can see by the station right now is that they're doing the Michigan's Adventure way. If you guys have been to Michigan Adventure for their Wild Mouse, Mad Mouse, 
uh, they're they're putting one train at a time, and then everyone else that they have like three trains going, they're waiting on the break run before they uh, can get off. They're they're not like the fly where they're sending trains. They're just sending one train at a time, but there's three trains there, so I I I don't get where Del Toro Ryan for the block zone. <laughs> That's a bit better than I was thinking how it was, but still not not good. Thank goodness they're doing it right away when it's uh, not too busy. We just came off of Spinning Dragons, which was a decently fun ride. I think I like the St. Louis one a little bit better. I think that one spun a bit more, but I do like the setting and landscaping around this one. So there's pros and cons to each one, I guess, but uh, not bad for our first coaster of the day. Okay, we are entering into the Africa section of the park. And look at the theming on all the buildings and even like the music changes once you step into a new area. Like it's kind of like Disney, like those transitions are super obvious. Yeah, I, I am here for it. This, guys, this park is so underrated. I'm already loving it so much. We even have a little photo op for the original Zambezi Zinger here. You can actually still ride. It's in, uh, I think Australia, I think it is. Really? Okay, uh, that's good to know. Yeah, it's, it's in a small park down there. And here it is, coaster number two of the day and the newest coaster at Worlds of Fun, Zambezi Singer 2.0. Obviously, it's not the original. This one is a GCI Wood family coaster, and I am so excited to check it out. It actually looks a lot better than I was expecting it to. I'm so ready for this. All right, Zambezi Tours Daily, enter here. Don't mind if you do. Here's the grand reveal, the one, the only, Zambezi Zinger. Guys, I can't with the theming of this. Like, this is giving Bush Gardens Tampa. Like, I'm so impressed. Worlds of fun, where have you been? Kansas City, Missouri, that's where. Okay, so Zambezi Zinger was okay. Uh, it's definitely not an airtime machine, but it does have some cool moments with the turns. This is a ride that's made for the laterals more so than the airtime. So uh, I liked it for that. I also love the theming, of course. Like you had highly detailed trains. There was music in the station. So that aspect I liked. There's a really cool tunnel halfway through. I don't think I'm a fan of the Titan track. I didn't like it on uh, Predator at Darien Lake. Don't think I'm a fan of it here. It's glossy smooth but it, it takes away from the intensity of the rides. 
and I kind of like the shakiness that you get on wooden coasters. Like a ride like Mystic, it's not overly rough, but you still have, I don't know, a bit of character and I feel like the Titan Track takes that away. So it's an okay ride. I definitely need to do more rides on it. So I'm not giving up on it yet. Just, I don't know, I think I was expecting more from it. I was expecting way more from this thing. I thought, I think it's a good, good family coaster. Um, but I was I was expecting more airtime and stuff like that. I think the paint track just ruins that ride, honestly. Yeah. I think it's too smooth. Uh, but the one of the good parts I do like, I do like the turns and that on it. That was a little whippy. But other than that, I was expecting way more. I thought it's a little, I think it's a little overrated. But hey, at least their merch game is strong. two credits down and we are feeling a little hungry right now so we are going to grab some lunch here at the gorilla grill i did some research prior to coming to the park and this place sounded pretty good it looked like they had some skewers some uh really great barbecue options so i'm excited to try it out they had a few interesting options at the gorilla grill but i ultimately ended up getting the moroccan chicken skewers with a side of fruit because health However, I barely got to take a bite out of them when my meal was interrupted by a rather unexpected visitor. Okay, I tried the first few bites of the uh, chicken skewer. It tastes, oh god, there's a wreck. A few moments later. Nope, 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 nope. Do not come. Do not come close. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> that was kind of scary. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Flavor is pretty good. Could be maybe like it's ever so slightly dry, but not bad overall. Actually, actually, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I like it. So, yeah, not a bad meal. Could be better, but not bad. <laughs> so Burke saw the sign for Prowler, he's gone. And this is him running! There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide because the Prowler's about to take you out of sight. Meow! Okay, so we just did Prowler, the park's GCI wooden coaster, and it is so good. Like, I was expecting it to be good, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. We got a back row ride, and honestly, I would say it's comparable to Mystic Timbers at King's Island. They're actually so close. This ride just blew me away. The air time, the laterals, the way it interacts with the terrain, the way it goes through the forest. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. And sad thing is, guys, you usually know that I love the beast. Better than the beast? Better than the V! Yes! Yeah! I'm sorry. It did give me a head thing, like I could feel the headaches, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good, but this slaps all over the zinger. I'm sorry, but it's neck and neck of the piece. I, I actually want night rides on this, but it does not beat Ruby and Flyer Phoenix for me. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's, it's, it's definitely up there. Like, definitely a top tier wooden coaster. Uh, that's a legit wooden, that's a legit GCI. That's up there with Mystic. We got a back row ride. The Fowler in the back row, that F time is so good and impressive. That thing is so good. Like, after riding Zanger, I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, Fowler made this park better for me. Oh, yeah, big time. Oh my gosh, guys, we have left worlds of fun. And turns out we're in Carowinds because right over there is Fury. Oh my God, Fury? How did we get here so quickly? I don't know. We must have got tired of the perilous uh, zinger, so we came here to Red Fury. Yeah, it's the time zones. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we came over here to ride Mamba, but unfortunately, 
it's closed. And looking on the park app, we can also see that Timberwolf is closed and Patriot is closed. Basically, any coaster that we still need to ride, except for the Boomerang and the Wacky Worm, is closed. So that's, that's kind of upsetting, to be honest. Because I am loving the park so far. Like, it's definitely got good bones. The theming is great. The rides seem to be good. But if operations aren't up there, that's a big detriment to a theme park. I mean, you can build the best theme park in the world with the best rides and the best storytelling, and the best theming. But if you can't get your attractions up and running and you can't operate it smoothly, then it's null. So we'll see how the day goes. I'm getting a little bit concerned, but I am holding out hope that things open up soon. just coming off of the boomerang here which was surprisingly smooth i was not expecting it to be that smooth it was uh, i mean it was still a boomerang but not that bad overall I just took a ride on the Danger Noodle, aka Mamba, uh, another one of these Chance Morgan hypers. It was pretty good. It reminded me a lot of Steel Force over at Dorney, and I don't think I can say which one is better over the other at this point, but I can say it was really good. There were some good pops of airtime. The helix towards like the end there was pretty, pretty forceful, and there was also some head chopper moments with the supports there, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, well, overall it's a great ride. Like it's not like as good as some of like the PM hypers out there. And yeah, I definitely gotta get some more rides on here before the end of the day. Okay, we are now in the Wild West section of the park. And unfortunately, one ride we will not be getting today is Timberwolf, another one of their wooden coasters. When we were riding Mamba, we actually saw some people working on the lift on this ride. So yeah, I don't think this is one we're gonna get today. Okay, one ride we were told not to miss though is Cyclone Sam's. And I wouldn't have thought that this was a ride, but apparently it's a chance ride to wipe out located right here in what looks to be a bar, but it is in fact a ride. Okay, so Cyclone Sam's might have been like one of the best flat rides I've ever done. Like the ride itself was crazy. Just you spun around way faster than I was expecting to. You got some laterals and you got some air time. So that was super cool. And the effects like the audio, the strobe lights, the black light on the wall. It just created this really cool experience that I was not expecting. So do not skip out on this ride. It is, it, I'd say it's a must see at this park. So here in Planet Snoopy, they do have a kitty credit. It's called Cosmic Coaster. It's basically like a Snoopified version of a Wacky Worm. Unfortunately, they do have a hard height limit of 54 inches, which means that a tall boy like me is out of luck. So that's one, another credit we can't get today. Oh well, I mean, I was kind of half expecting that to be honest. I mean, it's a Wacky Worm, so I'm kind of saving myself some embarrassment by not riding it. Well, still would have been a nice little plus one. All 
right. I love how in the Americana section here, they have a cute little all American shake shop. I definitely need to grab a milkshake from here. And look at that, like those look like the Hershey milkshakes. That, that looks really good. I'm excited for this. So I got the celebration shake, which was created in honor of the park's 50th anniversary. So it's got some birthday cake, blue icing, uh, I think it's a cake batter flavor, but it looks so, so good. And uh, my friends are off riding Patriot right now, but I'm actually gonna go and watch a show, another 50th anniversary thing, the uh, Moulin Rouge 50 show. So yeah, let's take this over and enjoy a shake and a show. in this incredible venue. Am I right? Today, we have prepared for you a performance filled with glamour. Say ooh. Ooh. Intrigue. Now say ah. 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 Dazzling. Thank you. The newest dazzling fashions from Paris. Ooh la la. Ah. It's a tribute of music and memories. It's Moulin Rouge 50!
time to train him. We're getting a proper send off. Howdy! <laughs> is my feet. Watchdog Raccoon Rick. Ah! Well, I think we do have it shot golden almost 30 years. I think that's a tall oh. tale that you're spreading. Now, is that why you kicked a set of swing last night? Oh. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Spencer oh. Hammer Road has a very strict one. It's not serving to miners. Or miners. Oh, okay. Or miners, miners, do y'all get it? Miners. Miners. Okay. Thank you, man. Well, I ain't reclining flat. I would never lie down on the job. And anyway, you're embarrassing me in front of all these fine train run folk. I'm not just over here mining my own business. Mining my business. M-I-A-I-N-G my business. I think I'm going to clean a tractor for all the dynamite. Do we train run folk over these my deputy aim is just a prospector and his fuse. Watch our raccoon and raccoon center yard. I'll go check it out, but I'm pretty sure they're over here. Let's see here. Yeah, no, they're not in there. Don't worry, that we're gonna go check this out, but Rick's gonna go in first because he is a lot braver than I am. Three, betrayal! <laughs> oh, folks, I'm not hearing nothing. Rick might be in trouble. I better go give him some backup. Don't you worry, buddy, I'll come for you. Together we form the Notorious. Mean, tiny kid. Rampaging. Patrick Mahomes. Cheering up. Unlawful moonshine. Our moonshine still broke down last week. We need a new flux capacitor. Plus, I'm trying to get me a new sassy pair of boots. One of those ones with the reds on the bottoms called them. Oh, Lowy Boots Tans. And it costs the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, we're talking like 50 billion trillion dollars. <laughs> Just a second. What? Where are we going? Oh, <laughs> oh well, wait, we're dirty and. I wanted to surprise you. Uh -huh. So, I'll have them soaking in some bleach, a wee bit of oxyclean, and love. What did you say? I'll have those dirty guns a soak in. Oh, you can't just leave them sitting. Ta da! Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. I played with the guns, <laughs> fell apart in the watching game. statement you know it's true. All right, you rascals, I was watching you. Any sudden moves and a hog can tie all of y'all to a tree. Hey, Clovis. Hi. Hi. Hey, look at hey, you. Hey, you. Oh. Oh. Oh, Jack, Nabbit, Amos. <laughs> oh, man, if that's don't you word, we are going to go get the deputy and get y'all out of here. I ain't never going to give you up. <laughs> 
You got him again, man. Rick roll. But enough messing around. Deputy, come quick. No, Kate. You're not gonna stop us if we're robbing these folks and making our little child. Oh, this is just a recipe for disaster. How? How can you know what my sister's doing? Not how is this Portland bandits? Oh, you think you can just come in here sneaking and be the law? Yes, that's my job. Oh. And I have a shiny star band that's so tough. <laughs> So we just did Patriot, which is, I think, the last roller coaster we're going to get today. But it was so much fun. I mean, it was so smooth. And normally, I do prefer my B&M inverse to be up more on the intense side. But this one, it really gave that sensation of gliding. Like, it reminded me more of, like, Wild Eagle at Dollywood, where it's not super intense, but the feeling of flight is what gives it fun. So I don't know where it would rank, just because it's so different. But um, if you want a smooth, glossy ride, this is, this is the coaster for you. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine, thank you. Dude. Wonderful. Great, well now, be sure you come back for me on Saturday. That's our election, and I'm running for mayor again. Okay, okay, well what's your, what's your platform? What's what? Oh, my platform? My platform is, it's working, so why change? All right, sounds good enough for me. You have my vote. Thank you. All right, have a good one. Uh, So Worlds of Fun also has a water park known as Oceans of Fun, which amazing name, by the way. I am obsessed 
with that little play on words there. But it is open for one more hour and we're going to run around, see what we can do. I probably won't film because, you know, technology in water parks tend to uh, not mix very well. But we'll catch up with you soon. Flamingo! <laughs> now that is the only acceptable welcome party to a water park that I will ever accept from now on. Alrighty, so we didn't have time for too many slides today. Like I said earlier, we only had an hour. And I did Hurricane Falls, which is the uh, like the group rap slide. That was pretty good. And then I did Predator's Plunge, which is their skybox slide, similar to Muskoka Plunge at Canada's Wonderland. Those slides are always my favorite whenever I'm at a water park. And then I finished off my time here at the water park by getting the last slide of the night on Shark's Revenge, which is kind of like a boa constrictor slide. And those slides are so much fun. They're actually so forceful. They you really whip around those turns and you really don't expect it. So I, I think they're an underrated slide. So yeah, a very short visit to Oceans of Fun, but a very fun visit overall. Okay, no Panda Express isn't the most exciting meal option in the world and it's kind of everywhere in theme parks, but we just couldn't help. It just fit the aesthetic of being in the East Asia section right here by Spinning Dragon. So, you know what? Sometimes you just crave the Panda Express and when you crave the Panda Express, you get the Panda Express. Alrighty, so we've just got a couple more rides on Patriot since it closes early for the fireworks. Um, and our last couple of rides have been in the back row. I think this is a front row ride. Uh, again, like I said earlier, this isn't an intense b and but you're there just to glide and soar, and it, 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 you get that feeling in the front. Patriot is a pretty good invert leg. I mean, I, I think it's my least favorite one of the ones I have. Yeah, like it's hard to I, say. I got two back row rides and one front. Uh, I think the front row is better. I think it's a little more intense, but like, I mean, it's still not that intense. Flight deck's better. Redacted. Cancelled. Cancelled. Okay, just did a back row ride on Mamba. If there's any doubt in my mind before, I think this slaps all over Steel Force. No hate to Steel Force, so this is still a fun ride. But no, this... we can hate on it. It's still forceless. Okay, I still like it. But but the, the, this had something different. I liked it. it. It was so good. All right, before the end of the day, we got to do the Viking Voyager, which is their log flume. Nothing too crazy by the looks of it, but still a fun ride to get off of our list.
Okay, so I'm making my way over to Prowler to do my last rides of the night, but I figured I'd give my review on the park now. I am so in love with Worlds of Fun. I do not want to hear anyone slander this park ever again because it is absolutely amazing. Now listen, I, I get it. Enthusiasts might look at this park and think that it doesn't have a very good coaster collection. Mind you, I would argue that Prowler, Patriot, and Mamba are all top tier rides, but hey, there's only eight coasters and to be fair, we only got six of those credits today. So the park really does need one more standout, but it it's the stuff that's not the coasters that makes this park so good. The theming, the atmosphere, like I'm walking here. I mean, this is a great night park first of all but it's just so peaceful like there's th like i said there's theming there's music there's good food everywhere the architecture just everything comes together to make this park like one of the most immersive cedar fair parks i have ever been to and uh, i just appreciate those little touches so much now i do recognize that the park has put in a lot of work this year for their 50th anniversary so maybe if you've been to the park in the past it wasn't so great but i, I think they've just done so much i mean the characters that we've seen around the park, the, the train show, the, I can go on and on. I cannot believe how far and above this park has exceeded my expectations and I cannot wait to get back here. Now, I do need to address a couple of little things. One, again, I think they could use one more standout coaster. I would personally love to see them add in like an Intamin or a Mac multi-launch, maybe do it as an homage to Orient Express. If they already brought back San Busy Zinger, that'd be the next logical move. Then the other thing I think this park can improve on is operations. We've had a lot of coasters go down on us throughout the day. Uh, I wanted to get one more ride on Sam Beasy Singer just now, and it was closed. It was closed when I walked by it earlier, so I'm glad we got that one ride in, but that, that wasn't too great. Mambo was down a few times when we went to ride it. Timberwolf was closed all day, so in that regard, I think the park needs to do better. But on the flip side of that, when the coasters are up and running, their dispatches have been top notch, so I do got to give the park credit where credit is due. But yeah, overall, Worlds of Fun is well on its way to being a top tier park. There you have it. I, I think I've said pretty much everything I need to say. I'm sure editing me will fill in any gaps, but Worlds of Fun, I love you. Checking out the Plaza Gifts gift shop, and we found a retro find. A little callback to Orient Express. Love that the park still acknowledges that ride. And of course, we have some 50th anniversary merch to celebrate the uh, big celebrations this year. Very nice, very nice. As always, I had to get a new edition for the Magnet Collection. And this one, I only saw one of them in the store, but I like it because it has the hot air balloon logo, the park skyline, and of course it recognizes the 50th anniversary. So that is gonna look amazing on my fridge. So we ended the day in the best way possible. We got the last ride of the night on Prowler and we got a firework ride. That was so good, oh my god. I know. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I mean, I knew the fireworks were coming, but then like they also had the drone aspect to it. Yeah. So we're going up the lift though, you can see the fireworks in this giant like hot air balloon made I out of just like, holy shit, we're about to get a firework ride on Flower. <laughs> it was epic. I swear, we didn't plan that. No, no we didn't. And then the only frustrating part was then we were sitting on the brake light and I'm like, okay, let's go, get me off this thing. I want to go find a spot to watch the fireworks. Thankfully, I managed to catch the tail end of the show. And it was basically the perfect ending to what was basically a perfect day here at the park. I love this place so freaking much. Yeah, if you're these people that uh, hate on this park, I don't Stop get it. it. Stop it right now. I don't get it. Well, what's the hate here? The only issue I had with this park was that the slow operation on Spinning Dragons. Yeah, and, and I, the fact that so many rides were down. And, and that the Tim Wolf was down and that, um, that we weren't able to stay on rides when lines were empty. Yeah, that's true. That was a bit annoying when we chat, we're trying to marathon uh, Prowler at the end of the night there. But other than that, nearly a perfect day. So much fun. Can't wait to get back here.
And that does it for our first ever visit to Worlds of Fun. Now the only thing that I wish I got to do that I didn't get around to was the 50th Anniversary Museum, which had ride vehicles, memorabilia, and other kinds of artifacts from throughout the park's 50 year history, including the lead car from the Orient Express, which had previously been on display at the National Roller Coaster Museum. But yeah, th if I had to do things all over again, I would have tried to prioritize popping into there for a bit. But yeah, like I said, I love this park so much. I think it is so underrated, and except for a few issues with operations, we had such an amazing day here. I just really hope that all of the changes that they made for the 50th anniversary season continue to live on, because if they do, Worlds of Fun is on its way to being a top tier park. Anyways, that is pretty much the end of the Missouri part of the Missouri road trip, but coming up, we have one more stop, and that is Indiana Beach, which yes, is outside of the state of Missouri, but it was part of this trip. We ended up squeezing it in at the last minute on the way home, so there's one more installment of the series to look forward to, but if you don't want to miss that or any of my other adventures from theme parks, attractions, and beyond, you might want to consider becoming a subscriber. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at ADB Parker, and on TikTok and Facebook at Adventures with Parker. As always, big shout out to my patrons for all of your support. I really do appreciate it, and what you do really helps the channel in some big ways. And if you want to learn how you can support the channel for as little as a toonie a month, you can head on over to patreon.com slash ADB Parker to learn more. Also be sure to check out my merch shop, Adventure Outpost, which you can find at awpmerch.myspreadshop.com. I have lots of interesting designs inspired by my adventures, and I'm looking to release some new designs soon, so be on the lookout for those. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, the adventures are calling. See ya! This particular installation was made for the sequicentennial, I know I butchered that word.